So court is now in session. Here we have four more company consisting of the CEO, chief engineer, and the safety inspector versus the general public. The defendant is accused of creating a subcompact vehicle, the Ford Pinto, in 1971, which had obvious defects in the fuel tank design. The Pinto contained a fuel tank placed in the rear of the vehicle that was prone to combustion during collisions and trauma to the region. This defect was first noted during the initial production and testing of the Pinto. Instead of assessing the vehicle, Ford took other actions which led to the over 3 million defective vehicles being manufactured and sold. Ford is being accused of endangering the general public and those who purchase the vehicle. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Okay, the court will begin. Will the plaintiff's lawyer please begin? Your Honor, first I would like to bring up the engineer's ill practices. Ford Motor Company has intentionally created a car with a faulty gas tank and knew this prior to their safety testings and still didn't take action to fix the car. Instead of recalling all the cars for repair, Ford's executive members did a cost-benefit analysis, placing a price on human lives of $200,000. So based on these accusations, the defendants have violated many terms found in the Professional Engineers Act, specifically sections 72, which is professional misconduct, and section 77, which is code of ethics. The first issue created by Ford Motor Company reaches 72.2 B, C, D, and F, section 77.2 1 and 2, and section 77.8. The second issue reaches 72.2 A, B, C, and F, 77.2 1 and 2, and 77.8. Finally, the third issue reaches 72.2 B, and 77.21 and 2 and 77.8. It is clear that the defendant has intentionally violated many of the standards for section 77 and 72. So may the defendant's lawyer please generate some alternatives. Because we have already distributed the vehicle, we will continue to sell the car and pay off the value we have put on human lives and continue current operations. No, this decision would still violate many of the standards which I have listed above. Okay, what if we did go with a recall? No, even this alternative will violate many standards. What you should have done was do a recall and inform the public as well so they are aware of the dangers of the car. Based off of further review, the defendants are found guilty and will be punished accordingly. However, let's discuss some compensations for the plaintiffs uh, involved. Yes, Your Honor. The three defendants all owed a duty of care to the general public and the customers who purchased the Ford Pinto. According to tort legal precedents, there have been similar matters, such as the Donoghue versus Stevenson scenario, where a death nail was found in a bottle of ginger beer, place, which placed the public in danger of illness. The manufacturer owed a duty of care to the public, which is breached due to failure to ensure their safety. Ford Motor Company will be tested for similar liability. Firstly, the engineers were required to design a vehicle for the Ford Company it is implied that vehicles would follow all safety of the regulations and be designed to the highest safety standard possible. By creating this design, the engineers were negligent in their ability to provide top safety. The safety inspectors owed a duty of care to the company and the public in order to ensure that the final vehicle produced actually functioned to the highest safety standard of the company. Finally, Ford Motor Company owed a duty of care to its customers that the vehicle delivered to the public would not in any avoidable way cause harm to the customers or the general public while still functioning in the correct manner. So essentially, all three defendants owed a duty of care for safety of the customers and the general public. The Pinto had a tendency to combust during rear-end collisions. The combustion had also been noted to hurt people in the secondary vehicle as well can pose potential dangers to people in the nearby area. The defective design was easily avoidable. As a result, there was a clear breach in Ford's duty to care to ensure customer and public safety. Was there any injury? The exact number is still debatable. However, it is confirmed that there are at least 27 to 180 deaths and additional injuries related to the Ford Pinto's defective design and tendency to combust during rear end collisions. Based off the given evidence, this case falls under tort law regulations. The compensation needed for those killed or injured due to defective design will be paid for by the Ford Motor Company. The engineers, the safety inspectors, 
and the CEO shall have their own individual punishment. But through vicarious liability, the company is responsible for compensation. Case closed.